Ken and I are going to be doing quite a bit of repair work to his sloop right here. We've got some work to do in the turn of the bilge right here. We're going to put a few planks in it. And we've got paint up and varnish and all kinds of different things. And we wanted to stage the boat up properly. And, uh, you know, we figured, well, we want to stage it all the way around it because we just don't want to have to keep moving the staging and moving the staging all over the place. And, uh, you, spend, you, know, it's just, you, you know, you spend more time yeah. moving staging than you do working on the boat. Yeah, so. it's, just, it's just ridiculous. So we've got a couple of mismatched staging horses right here, but we're out to duplicate this horse right here. And, uh, you know, these things are great because, uh, like, they sit on terrain, like I said before, and they don't have to have too many diagonals in them or anything like that and the horse is nice and wide at the base because when you've got the plank up close to the boat and you're like pushing on the boat driving screws or something you don't want to be tipping the horses over and the other thing that's really nice about them is they're adjustable in height you know you can slide the plank through and up onto the next rung you know if you're working on the bottom or you want to sit or whatever you so, want so you pretty can get much all kinds of positions out of them so pretty much with this boat with just eight foot two by fours that you can get in any lumber yard, you can build these boat stands for probably a lot less than you could buy one of those A-frame ladders. Oh, no, no question. And uh, you know they're actually kind of nice in there. They're wooden. We love wood, so you know we make them out of wood. And, and yeah, frankly, I mean, you can that, make them ten feet tall, twelve feet tall yeah. to work on twelve meter yachts or big giant power boats or whatever you're going to have. But yeah. these eight footers work for us really, really well. You we know, can get the planks all the way up high. Work on the deck. You know, we move the horse, horses up closer to the boat. You know, we can work on the top sides, paint it, work on the bottom. This staging setup right here will work for everything we need to do on this boat right here. And now we're going to go inside and show you how to make one of these horses. Well, now we're back inside and we're going to duplicate one of the staging horses that you saw outside. And uh, we've got one of them right here, so we're going to get our dimensions and things off of this horse right here. Now, I just wanted to show you that... Uh, this horse just opens up very easily, and uh, it, it, they're great because they're flexible. You're not always on a parking lot or something perfectly flat, so they have to go on terrain, you know, and they do that very nicely because they kind of adjust like this, so you can make all kinds of things happen with them that you wouldn't make with a horse with all kinds of braces on it. So we've been using them for years exactly like this now. I probably would have made them somewhat different, but we're not making them the way I would make them. We're making them like that one right there. So, you know, that doesn't need an improvement really. And uh, what we're going to do really is um, take these two by fours now. These are just eight foot two by fours, precision cut to length. You know, it's nice that you can make them just out of an eight footer. If you had to have them 10 feet tall, I'm sure you could make them 10 feet tall or 12 feet tall. But, uh, you know, the only ones we need for Ken's boat are eight feet long. So we've got our dimensions and uh, the bottom cross piece in these two bys, we're going to recess it right down in here, notched right in like those back there and every one of them as well. And uh, the first one is 18 inches from the bottom. Now, I'm just going to make a mark there at 18 inches. And uh, we have the very end staggered a little bit because our cuts are going to be diagonally a little bit like that. So we're going to make a mark here at two feet. So the top of the bottom rung is going to be 18 inches. The next one's going to be two feet from that, two feet from that, and two feet from that. So that's where we're going to make our marks right there. Now, let me just set my tape down, and I've got a bevel set right here that we have set and we basically just stole the angle off of, off of this horse right here. We kind of made sure it matched as many of them as possible so that's pretty good. I don't know how many degrees it is but it's working just fine so here's my first mark. I'm going to make a mark like this. I'm going to turn it around make a mark on the other legs like that. Now as I go down here I'm just going to explain a few things to you. The uh, the two marks are opposite directions because we have to cut them separately. We can't cut them all the way across. You'd have four of exactly the same legs. You need two legs that match and two legs that match. So this is what we're up to right here. We just got them clamped together already, nice and tight. We put some vertical clamps on it to hold the surfaces like that, which we're not going to remove when we take these apart. And we've got clamps across. It just makes it convenient for us to mock it, so. OK, 
just like that. Now that would be the position of the top of our rungs. Now the slot is seven and a half inches wide. We ripped the ledger board to seven and a half inches because they weren't perfectly consistent. I'm just going to pick up the ledger and put it on here like that and make a little mark right here and a little mark right here on every one of them. And rather than trace it with my ledger, I'm going to use my bevel set all over again. That way, that's about as easy to do as I can come up with right there. Like so. And just lining that up with the mark as close as I can. Being as careful as possible, really. Even though they're just crude horses, it doesn't hurt to do things carefully. And uh, sometimes slowly is as fast as you can go. So now we're going to make that one there. Like that. Now this whole set of horses is kind of nice because almost anybody's got the equipment to do this. We're going to do basically the whole operation with a skill saw and maybe a drill to drive some screws, but uh, it's uh, pretty basic. We don't have to have any special equipment. We don't have to have a radial arm saw or anything like that. We just All we need is a skill saw. So now we've got the marks. We're going to put a slot right in here. Look at this. I've got this one backwards, Ken. Look oh, at yeah, that. that one is back. Look at that. See that? Yeah. Well, that's why we have a we scraper. We wouldn't want to have wanted yeah. to. Let what. me just cross that right out. I'll tell you what. Cross it out and scrape it right off. All right. I'll scrape it off. Yeah. Well, that's why you reserve the right to make a mistake. That's exactly right. You know? I guess, I guess when you're doing this, one of the difficult things that seems so simple is they're actually mirror images of each other. So when you're moving from one side to one side, you can get confused about what's up and down and what's right, right and left. That's right. So here's our mark right here. Let's see, we're going to get them going all the same direction. Here we go, right here. Yeah, like that. And like that. And like that. And like that. Now, let me just look it over one more time. Yeah. That one looks right to me. So, we've got them clamped together vertically, like I said, and all we want to do now is just separate them. So we're going to take two on that side and two on this side. And then we're going to make our cuts. One more clamp right here. That's right. And I don't think it would hurt a thing to clamp one end down fairly tight while we're doing it. Like that. Okay, now we've got two skill saws set up to cut exactly the same depth. So Ken's going to use an old steam powered <laughs> port of cable over there. And I've got an antique Royobi over here. I don't think you've ever seen one of these before, or one of those, but uh, they work just as good as the new ones. So we're just going to make a bunch of cuts. We're going to make a bunch of cuts straight across like that, that we can just chip out there with a chisel afterwards.
Well, Ken and I have finished up making the depth cuts uh, for the steps, and uh, basically all I'm going to do is uh, take a hammer and knock some of these blocks right out of here, like that. That's pretty easy to do. And uh, we'll have to take a, a chisel to them a little bit and clean up the bottoms, and you could, you could use a rabbit plane a little bit, but we'll see how clean it comes out here. That's what we've got right there. I just set my hammer down and take a chisel and uh, now I'm not really slicking it what I'm doing is I'm chipping at it with a fairly good sized chisel and there you go it's done it's like that we'll maybe we'll slick across a tiny bit but Well, now that we've made all those cuts with the skill saw and knocked all those blocks out and slicked it up a little bit and uh, took a rabbit plane to it a little bit just to smooth it out. Uh, you know, when we were knocking the blocks out and, and uh, slicking the blocks out of there, I mean, the horses were rocking around and everything else, but, uh, you know, I don't think it's real important because, uh, you know, these are staging horses. We're That's not working on the schooner right at this minute, and we're just kind of trying to get it done as fast as we can and still have a decent job. So, you know, what we're going to do now is we're going to unclamp these verticals, Ken and I, both of us, here, and this is going to go like this. That's going to be the bottom end of the horse, and this is going to be the top end of the horse. And what we're going to do before we fasten it together is get the lints off of these steps or rungs from the horse behind us, and then we're going to cut off a few to that angle. We're going to put the bottom one on first and the top one, and we'll get the middle lints probably just by uh, hanging the board across and tracing them. So let's measure this one out right here again. I'd say that was 43 and 3 quarters. So we're going to cut one 43 and 3 quarters. Now we're going to make this cut, this cross cut. It's just some little thing I want to show you about this before I make that cut. And that is, is that, you know, Ken's going to hold that piece up at that angle, but, you know, if we let this thing go this way, it would bind the cut. So what I'm going to do is he's going to hold still, and as I pass through, I'm going to pull this in this direction so that it opens the cut up so we don't bind. And you'll see how it works. This one's going to be 26 and 3 quarters. Oh, you know what? This one will make one in between almost the right length. Yeah. Okay, let me cut another one here. 26 and 3 quarters. So now we're just going to make sure that these pieces fit in there. They might be just a tiny tight, so I'm just going to take one little swipe on there like that, maybe chamfer the corner a tiny bit. That'll help it go in, and then chamfer this corner. Like so. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if it'll go right in there. Like that. How about this one? Oh, this one's all ready to go right here. All right, that's great. Now we're going to do the top. Go. 
And we're going to go. That'll go. Yeah. Now we made those a pretty tight fit because we just want them to be tight like that. Now, let's see what Ken comes up with for fastenings here. And I don't know. What do you think? You think we should pre-drill them? No, <laughs> I don't think we're so. We're not going to pre-drill them, right. I don't well, think. We're just it. using regular old deck screws, yeah, look right? At that. Look at that. Mm -hmm. pre they got the drill bit right on the very tip of them right here. So you th you think, you these think, are the ones. You think we should measure in between no, and make sure so. they're all the same whip size? Them in there any way you yeah, want. okay. And I won't put it through the knot just because. And I'm using two and a half screws because I got hundreds of two and a half screws left over from the rib ends. <laughs> we use what we got, that's what we do. One thing I've learned is you don't hold the screw way down the bottom because if you topple the screw over, sometimes the bit pokes a hole in your hand. So you hold the screw up near the driver like this, and that way you can't get hurt. Like I said, these screws do not break. They're incredibly strong. I mean, I don't use them in boats because they rust when the uh, coating gets off them. But uh, you know, for this, they're the ideal thing. And they got like a drill bit on the end of them, so you don't have to pre-drill. Not one of them has split the end of the plank or anything like that. So we have no concerns about that kind of stuff, like a lot of people do. So flip this one right over, like that, and we're going to take our next two legs. If we can not confuse ourselves about <laughs> which one is which here. I think this one goes over there. I think you're absolutely goes over right. There. Like that. And now we can put our boards through that. So this will be one first one right here. How's this sound? This one long enough for right here? Oh yeah. Look, Look at, at that. that. Even that right up right there. I'm gonna squeeze that up like that. Right there. Okay. I'm just gonna make a mark right here and a mark right here. Okay, that's one. Get my bevel set. Not that I need it. We got the bevel mopped actually, but let's do it the right way this time. Oh yeah, look at that. So All right, we've got all the assembly of the wooden pots all done. All we really have to do is drill a hole in the top for a bolt on each end so we can fold it out like this and a piece of line through probably right here just so we can stop it from spreading, you know, and that line's adjustable so that you can have it any spread you want or anything like that, but uh, it was pretty easy to do. I know it looks a little bit crude actually, and maybe it is, but it's a staging horse. It's not a boat, so. I've got a mark on the very end here, three and a half inches from the end, and uh, it's not in the center of either one of these two bys, but it's going through the both of them at the same offset. So. There you go. Good. Blow out the back.
Well, now that we've got the horse all assembled, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, we've built one horse at a time right here. It's just for demonstration purposes, really. We could have built 10 horses at the same time because you can mass produce all the legs and all these pieces and everything. But, uh, you know, we've done it like this. Uh, for the first time here, we're going to open it up to see how <laughs> well it opens up. Before we stand it up, we'll give you a little demonstration. Now that's it. That's basically the complete horse right there, other than a line to make it uh, adjust. So I'm going to pick it right up and stand it right up alongside our other horse here and uh, just see what it looks like. There we go. Well, like that. now let's hope. open it right up. Get out of the way a little bit. And there you go. We're going to put a hole through here to put the line through. That's pretty much our last thing to do. And I, I measured it off to the center line here because, uh, you know, I can't tell one measurement from another. <laughs> so, you know, and I clamped a block in the back so I won't blow it out when I drill a hole through it because I'm notorious for that. So, you know, I think I'll just approximate this thing in the oh, middle I, right here. I don't know, Lou. Don't you think you, you think should, that'll work? Don't you think you should get a square no, or something no, no, to square that so. line up? All right, then. No, go right ahead. Go. Well, that's good. <laughs> it worked, but uh, it blew the block right in half, but it didn't bust out the other side. So let's put another block on the other side over here, Ken. Use what you got, right? So we got an old piece of line, just a piece of halyard. Let's clamp this one on here. Yeah, an old piece of halyard. That piece, brings back some memories, an actually. Piece, an old piece of halyard, and all I need is a knife to cut it with. Like that. Of course, we need to tie some kind of special knot on well, this. Well, a Turk's head, if you can well, do it. Well, I would, kind of real I would quick do like a wall even. and crown and double braid, but you, you, there's no such thing. So I'll just do a figure eight knot. Right, How's well, that? I guess that'll work. If you'll settle for a figure I'll eight, that'll, that'll, that'll be that. what that'll it is. Right. So, and then as far as how far open it should be? Yeah, something like that, Ken. Oh, we're on the staging. That's all right. We'll leave a little bit of extra line sticking there we out go. in case that we want to adjust it. That know? looks good to me. Yeah. There you go. So we'll cut that. We'll do the same thing again, a figure eight on this side, because it's a simple knot, but it's still a stopper knot. So there you go. There you go. Now that is a nice staging horse, actually, and they're quite stiff, especially when they're new. I mean, you can wear them out if you have them on too much terrain. It puts too much of a strain, uh, you know, on this, but you can diagonal them if you want on the outside. It won't work on the inside because of the way they fold into each other, but uh, there really isn't any need to do that. And uh, we don't even cut the ends of the legs on an angle that's even with the ground because normally, uh, well, right out here, we're on gravel and well, everything, everything else, so it just stops yeah. them from moving around. But if you were on perfect pavement, you might want to cut these off on an angle like this and then knock the corner off so that when you open it up, it doesn't chip the legs. You know, like a sawhorse, we knock the legs, the corners off on the legs on a sawhorse. But uh, this is a complete horse, and believe me, that thing is strong. That'll hold some weight. A lot of weight, and uh, pretty nice because it's adjustable. You know, sometimes you want the planks on this level and up and down, but uh, we've already talked about some of that stuff. Well, that takes care of that project right there, and uh, it's just something we wanted to get done as soon as we could because we want to get staging all the way around that boat, like I said, and, uh, you know, it was an opportune day for it, and uh, we had a little time doing it and a little conversation about the boat and the things we're going to do next and stuff like that, and uh, so we're going to move these horses outside out of our way, and uh, I don't know, what are we going to do next? I don't know, Lou. I was thinking maybe I would start building a 43-foot schooner. Well, I think you already started, actually. But, uh, you know, if we're going to continue, we're going to need another workbench down this side here, and that's what we're going to be working on. And, uh, you know, whether we'll do a video of it or not, I'm not sure. But uh, we're going to get that accomplished, and it isn't going to be long, and we're going to be Carvel planking the bottom of this 43-foot Alden schooner. That's it.